Halo Outreach Podcast to keep you update with everything going on in Halo. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Halo Outreach Podcast. Podcast that keeps you up to date with everything going on with Halo. Today is episode number three for you guys. We're going to be talking about a little bit of outpost discovery improvements from Orlando to Philadelphia from your boy Pat Man here. We're also talking about a little bit of the transfer. We're also introducing our buddy here, Rapscallion. We're giving you some tips on grinding up to 152 and some things coming up in the future on our channels and also in Halo 5. So, before we go into the information, let's uh, introduce everyone else in the podcast. We got our co-host, Pat Man Gaming. Why don't you say hello? What is going on, everybody? Pleasure to be back. Yeah, episode three. Pretty excited right now. And we have our first special guest here with us today is Rap Scallion. Rap, how do you say hello? Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Thank you for having me on, fellas. And Rap here is a guy who we come to know through just uh, like the general Halo sphere, I guess you call it a community of like on YouTube and Twitch and things like that, or just on streaming and just in general. Yeah, Raps <laughs> is a pretty cool guy. I found out that me and him got a lot more in common than uh, I would have ever thought that somebody, some random person on the internet would ever have with me. So I don't know if that's a compliment, Rap, or a, a diss, but you know, yeah, he's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say I like Pat. He's, I mean, he's no, he's okay. He's okay. Yeah. <laughs> debatable <laughs> i mean we both like avenge soundfold so i guess we can be cool on that level oh yeah yeah me and kevin already established that we're you know cool with each other <laughs> the jury's still out on everybody else in this world mm-hmm. uh i got to see avenge sevenfold front row so uh i think i got you guys uh, i got one? to well, I, I got to meet them so i think i got you beat so <laughs> oh. oh yikes okay checkmate <laughs> oh, yeah, well, i got to see them back row i got pictures with, with them with metallica so yeah. whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so let's go start with the information here to get the, the bread and butter of the uh, the podcast here. So we're going to start out with talking about the improvements for, of Halo Outpost Discovery from Orlando to Philadelphia. We're going to be talking to Pat about, Pat's going to be talking about that because he actually went to both events and talking about with uh, what we did on our first podcast with uh, Jeff Eastling and uh, John Friend, talking about how they were going to improve between the two. And want to see if they actually followed up with what they were talking about. So Pat, why don't you lead the way with the uh, experience between between the two events yeah so first and foremost i would say a resounding yes that philly was a much better experience overall for me personally and from talking to several people in line at the event there was just i mean and it's really hard to gauge these kind of things because first of all i went to orlando the very first day of outpost discovery the first ever day so obviously there was going to be a lot of bumps in the road and things like that and then it's on a holiday weekend, July 4th, so you're going to get a crap load of people. This time when I went to Philly, it was on a Sunday. It's not a holiday weekend. Um, I guess you could make the argument that Philly is not as, you know, tourist heavy maybe as Orlando, especially, you know, in the summer, you're going to have a lot of people going to Disney World, things like that. So um, I guess, you know, it's really hard to gauge that. But as far as the event itself, the pure event, yeah, everything was better. The The lines were much better. It seemed to flow a lot nicer. The things that John mentioned that they were going to do, they did do like as, as far as the lines, they had those little signs set up saying, all right, from this point forward, your wait's going to be about 60 minutes or this point forward, your wait's going to be about 90 minutes. And those are pretty accurate. Um, so they, they definitely did their research on there. I guess remember when John talked about like how they had like ways to, to tell the analytics of how the lines are moving and stuff, I guess all those numbers and stuff turned out to really help them. And I was talking with John at the event too, and he's like, you know, so what do you think? And I and I told him, I said, yeah, man, it's 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 a much better experience. I think it flows a lot better. The only line that was really like just still just crazy, and I, I don't I don't really know how they're supposed to fix this one was the VR line. You know, it's only six mm-hmm. people at a time. Um, I, the, it's it's six people in, in one match, that, and they got two sides of it, so it's you know twelve people at a time in the line, and uh, it was about I waited for about I want to say about two hours in that line. But everything else was wide open. The ring experience, when I went in Orlando, it was packed. That was about an hour and a half wait. It was maybe five to ten minutes all day. Oh, that's, on, a, whole, that's a big <laughs> improvement right there. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. Laser tag also was about two hours when I went in Orlando. And I would say probably no more than 30 to 45 minutes in Philly. So, yeah, overall. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. That's yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Like, I can't wait to see... 
it's only going to get better from here on out. And that's why I told John, it's like, you can only go up from here. You know, it can only get better with, you know, the, the improvements they keep on making. So anybody who's going to Chicago to um, the one in Texas or the one in Anaheim, they're, they're going to have a great experience. I, I would say I, I can only, I can only imagine it's going to get better. So I'd actually like to, to throw a suggestion in here. So one thing that I've actually seen, cause they, they actually have an app, correct. That you can actually download for, the outpost discovery yep so why not which i know this is probably something that's a lot more difficult than than what it would seem but i would think like maybe like a fast pass system or like actually book in advance when you actually want to ride that ride or that attraction so that way you're essentially in a virtual line instead of having to actually physically stand in that line for hours at a time or half an hour however long it would be you know that'll you'll basically just get in a virtual queue so that, you know, that'll allow you to actually go and look at the museum and mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. And yeah. It's when honestly your up, just go and, and go ride the ride. Yeah. I actually had a very similar experience to that when it came to PAX last year. Uh, Cause obviously you got so many people trying to play all these new games and things like that. Where um, I remember that the Ubisoft uh, booth, they you don't know, have, you know, seven eight different games that they were, had people playing. And uh, what you could do is actually sign up for a time to go, uh, play the game, say like 2.30 slot, one thirty slot, some stuff like that. And so then you can go off and like do your own thing. And then they'll basically send you a text message on your phone saying like, hey, your time's coming up in 10 minutes. Make sure you're, you're at the station kind of thing, which I really enjoyed, which is a huge improvement from PAX the previous years, which was just like, yeah, it kind of sounded like what like Outpost Discovery was for Orlando. It was just like, yeah, just stand in line, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And I actually talked with a lot of people online and they were making similar suggestions, like maybe even including that with the VIP pass. Okay, well, you play, you pay a premium. Why not include some sort of fast pass or, or mm. anything like that with mm-hmm. that with that VIP pass to, you know, allow those people to really pick and choose what stuff they want to tackle first. Um, yeah, because those VIP yeah. tickets aren't, they're not cheap. No, no they're, they're, they're not. not cheap. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah, that, that'd be a huge incentive to for people to yeah. buy those. Yeah, absolutely. They have, been, they, they have been still, have been selling out every event so far. I think they already said they sold out for Chicago, I think. Yeah, I think the the three-day pass might be sold out or something like that. Or some, one one yeah. of the things got sold out. Yeah, I saw it on Instagram. They had, they had uh, posted that, mm-hmm. but... Um, I mean, if you're going for, and I broke this down before, like if you're, if you're going for one day, I would think the VIP would be worth it. I don't know if VIP is worth it, worth it for all three days because it's like 300 something dollars, I think. Yeah. That's but kind it's of, like, uh, yeah, pricey. it's steep, but it's like an $80 difference on the single day, um, ticket and the, you get a six month game pass ultimate subscription with it. That's a $90 value alone and then you get all the other like little trinkets and goodies like the funko pop figure and dog tags and a nice little drawstring bag things like that so it's definitely i would say worth it for the one day but yeah the three days really really mm-hmm. steep and that would be a really nice incentive to add uh, as far as the vip pass goes but mm-hmm. i also wanted to uh just go into a little real quick because i did a whole video on this topic but at, while I was at Outpost, the very first thing that I decided to tackle was the ring experience because I didn't get a chance to try that at Orlando. I didn't do or, uh, the VR or the ring experience at Orlando. Those were the two things I missed out on. So the ring experience, I was in there. like I was the first person in line. I go in there, and I start talking to the, one of the ladies, and it was the only thing in the whole whole area of Outpost Discovery that I couldn't record because I was trying to record as much as I could for people who couldn't make it. And I asked her, I said, you know, why, why can't, you know, do you mind me asking why I can't record when we get in? She's like, well, you could record all the exhibits in the ring experience. You know, they, they had like a flood statue and things like that. 343 Guilty Spark and Index, a Sentinel. But once you got into the actual dome where they show you like a video of like a tour of a ring, we weren't allowed to record in there. And she said, because it pertains to the next game. And she didn't, obviously didn't say, you know, it's because it pertains to Halo Infinite, but we all know it's Halo Infinite. So yeah. and she's like, well, you know, I, I was like, well, is this Zeta Halo? Do you know if, if that's what this <laughs> ring is? And she just looked at me like dumbfounded. She's like, huh? and I was like, never mind. Uh, so, but she's like, yeah, it's supposed to be classified. It's supposed to pertain to the next game. So I actually covered really? a lot of the details that I saw in the, you know, I tried to do it off of pure memory of what I saw of that video and there's some really cool stuff in there. And there is a lot of similarities and parallels between the trailers we've seen for infinite and what they showed us at that video. So 
you know, if anybody's interested in going to see a detailed breakdown of that, I don't want to retread too much on the podcast, but yeah, I did make a video on that on my channel. Yeah, definitely so, want to check that out. So based on that, would you say that Sprint is in Halo Infinite? Absolutely. <laughs> Sprint, Clamber, all of it coming back. No classic movement confirmed. Everybody's going to be pissed. So, In fact, Spartan Charge has been upgraded to just a one-hit kill. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and I'd also like to take this opportunity to announce that uh, Armor Lock will be making a return. Oh, Halo my God. Infinite. And Jetpacks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a, that sounds fantastic. Like, I don't see what the problem would be. Yeah. You, that you heard it here first on the <laughs> Outreach Podcast, guys. Yeah, it's just a, just the greatest hits album, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, was there anything else you wanted to mention about the uh, Outpost improvements or just, like, things you experienced between the two? Or Yeah, I don't want to sound like I'm, like, I'm not bragging or anything, but I did get to go on stage. One of the coolest things was I got to go on stage and do the like a community play date basically with 343. So, oh, would, yeah, that's awesome. Would, yeah, it was just such a like Bravo was there and he, he comes up to me and he's like, because I, I had asked the mixer people, I was like, you know, what do I got to do to get on stage? Um, and they're like, just sit in the front row, raise your hand. So then Bravo comes up <laughs> to me before they they um, they go up there and he's like, oh, here, you're going to play some Halo with us. And I was like, well, I guess I am. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> and uh, I was on Sketch's team. It was a uh, Sketch versus I forgot who the other guy was. It, uh, uh, Unishek was there and Bravo was there, but I don't know who the who the who the other guy was. I can't remember. But I was on Sketch's team. We lost both games, but it was just like such a surreal experience. Like every time I got a double kill or a triple, like we played a like they said quote unquote it was the most sweaty and competitive husky raid match that they've seen at outpost yet <laughs> you know they're like this is the greatest outpost outpost match of husky raid yet and like bravo's just like standing behind me he's like pat man with the dope like it was so surreal like i'm like this is as close to i'm ever coming to like at a pro event where i'm just hearing my name getting called out like pat man with the double kill <laughs> with the triple kill oh he got the clutch flag capture i was like oh this is fucking awesome man I, I it was just a cool experience and uh and then i got that ice unicorn skin too on top of that as like a, a oh wow. and yeah technically you did play with three Four, three yeah, there. I did. So yeah, I got it. I, that, that was pretty awesome too. So yeah, just overall, oh, yeah. it was an awesome experience. And uh, John was awesome the whole time there. He was very welcoming. He you know kept checking in with me and making sure everything. And he was like, you know, you good? I was like, yeah, I'm good, man. And uh, yeah, just awesome experience. Any Halo, if if ha Halo means absolutely anything to you, whether it be in the past or or right now, you know, with the resurgence of Halo, how it's going right now just make it to an outpost if you can you know if it, it's a crazy drive for some people like i'm just stupid crazy about halo to drive to two events that were nowhere nowhere near me maybe not worth it but if you're like maybe an hour or so away or two hours three hours at the most yeah i would say definitely go out guys and just just go experience it it's awesome just to interact with the great community that is the halo community yeah, I'm just super jealous because like, I've been taking coding classes on the weekends, so I just can't go. And then like the one event I could go, it's the same weekend as PAX, so I can't go to that one. There's so, always next year, next year, yeah, yeah, hopefully next year we can all kind of reconvene, schedule it all up together, which would be pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah definitely. Be but yeah, so um, also on a little bit of the new side of things, talk about a little more on the transfer file transfer for uh, the, your file share when it comes to like, your maps and game modes. Uh, Pat, man, you said you hear you had a little bit of extra information for us about that. Yeah, I did. So we covered it in the last podcast briefly about you know this whole file transfer thing and the certain dates and stuff. So just a quick recap, you know, if Halo Three, Halo Four, Halo Reach, your maps and your game types that are on your file share are getting transferred to MCC, but there was a little stipulation in there for the PC players as far as how they were going to be able to get their maps there was basically said in the blog post that you would need to have access to an xbox one console to be able to access those maps and to get them on your pc so to get some clarification on that i just wanted to make sure i tweeted out to uh, sketch and postums and postums actually did respond to me and he said if there are any players with legacy content but use a pc and do not own an xbox their maps won't transfer when launching on pc this requires an Xbox One copy of MCC to complete the migration. They will be used to access the maps that have been transferred by other users on Xbox, however. So they like basically you'll be able to go ahead and access other people's maps that have been transferred over as part of the file share if you're on PC. But if you want to access your own maps, you're going to have to somehow get to an Xbox console 
and get that transfer completed after they do those certain dates. And I actually just made a whole nother video on that as well uh, on that topic, just to put that information out there again, if in case anybody yeah. needs to hear it. But yeah, I think that's kind of weird. Like I, I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Like it's kind of sucks. There might be people out there that have a PC only and haven't invested in the Xbox one and haven't played since the 360 days who may want to have some of their files, you know, transferred over from those 360 games. So I, I don't know if they'll ever really come up with some sort of alternative. I guess you could always ask a friend like, Hey man, you know, can I come use your Xbox to get my maps and stuff? But um, right. I really don't see a way around it. It has to be some sort of technical mumbo jumbo that's preventing them from doing it any other way, I would assume. Yeah, it seems like this is just a big technological feat or hurdle to begin with, with it being just a one time only deal. Like it's it cannot be easy to do. So yeah, I'm sure you're on the right track there. But yeah, like you said, I mean, unless they just have a friend that's willing to to let them log on or maybe hire somebody on Fiverr to <laughs> to go and, and log into people's accounts uh yeah that, that is unfortunate that that's the case mm. yeah i mean like i i think one of the uh, for if you're like a big halo fan you probably would have access to an xbox at this point and like if you were playing mcc and you cared about having your files transfer files transfer over you probably would have an xbox by this point i mean uh i mean like i like I used to have a 360 and I sold it once the Xbox one came out. I was like, there's no point for me to have this thing. Right. And also at the time I was mainly a PC gamer as well. But from my point of view, it's like, I didn't really have anything too awesome in my file chart. I wanted to bring over. So I think it's just one of those things where you have to go, yeah, tough titties. <laughs> tough titties yeah. said the kitty. <laughs> yeah. I would also say, I mean, stuff that's in my file share. Cause I, I am, terrible at foraging so i don't have any like original forge maps or anything like that so anything yeah. that i would have in my file share is more than likely in somebody else's anyway so mm -hmm. exactly yeah yeah there's there's yeah you joined the club here with me and kevin we uh we're, we're not proud of anything on our file share uh, as far as i mean i got some sweet clips and stuff but like maps wise or game types wise it's mostly other people's stuff probably that you know was really popular nothing nothing that i really created so yeah i just wanted to make like 4v4 slayer maps is what i wanted to make and right. I, I made some pretty good ones these are well forged ones in halo 3 and a little bit in reach but like the design of them themselves was probably terrible so no one would want to play on them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah, so we got that out of the way so once we talk about the news and information kind of out of the way we want to talk to you guys about our buddy here rap scaling who's with us on the podcast here so i figured give uh, rap a little bit of a platform to kind of talk about himself and where he came from when we got into halo and all that kind of stuff so uh rap so uh you are mainly a streamer right but you also have a little, little bit of a youtube uh channel right Correct. Yeah. As, as of right now, I, I'm more into streaming than I am YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's a little, it's a barren wasteland at this moment in time, but I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> to get that back up and running. But yeah, I am actually streaming to uh, both Twitch and Mixer at the moment, utilizing Restream. So I'm able to actually stream to both simultaneously. Um, but uh, yeah, I actually got into Halo back when I was, uh, I'll say 10 or 11 years old when CE actually launched uh i actually had never even heard of it never heard of xbox or anything like that uh, i was still playing nintendo 64 at the time oh yeah so uh but yeah i had a friend of mine uh actually invited me to go over to his house and play and we were we played four player uh split screen snipers on sidewinder on ce and and i was just instantly hooked i i went to gamestop like the next day sold the n64 everything i had with it uh, Ooh, so I could, that's dedication right there selling the n64 yeah. at that time how dare oh, yeah. you <laughs> yeah I, I was hooked i i had to play that game and mm. uh, I, I hadn't even touched the campaign at that time it was strictly multiplayer and i mean just the, that amazing campaign coupled with that that multiplayer i was i was hooked for life man yeah that uh, was the killer app man yeah it it, it was <laughs> and halo 2 came around and and seemingly topped it in every single way I uh, just agree with that. Yeah, playing you know neighborhood FFAs with everyone, and I emerged as the the most skilled player among my friends. So I, I quick they quickly decided they did not want to play with me any longer. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, one of those unfortunate things where I wanted to that, play, but 
nobody wanted to play with me you know that's also back in the day too where like if you're the best out of your friends group you felt like a badass you're like dude i'm right. fucking sick at this game you yeah know? Exactly. you can't touch me then, then you hop like, online when, and then, yeah, and then the Halo 2 head online, you're like, oh, I'm actually really not that good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, so you enjoy, obviously, just been enjoying Halo all that time. So, was it just like nothing but Halo? Well, well, so, you obviously, you had a backstory of like just playing Halo with your friends, which kind of like how a lot of people got into the Halo franchise. And then. What call, so what kind of made you transition over to doing like content creation or streaming and YouTube in, in general? Yeah. So, I mean, even going back to when I was a little kid, I've, I've always just had a fascination with just the concept of video. Just the fact that a, a contraption, which when I, when I actually started actually making, I guess, videos before YouTube or the internet existed, my, uh, my dad actually had one of those like shoulder mounted like news camera TVs. Like, oh man. <laughs> It looked like That's a giant what, bazooka yeah, that you yeah. on your shoulder. I used to use those uh, all the time in a video production class I had back in high school. Like it's like this big VHS tape, it's shoulder yeah, mounted yeah. thing. It was like holding a Spartan laser, basically. Yeah, like a like a spanker <laughs> or a Spartan speaker. laser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you would actually put an actual like VH, VHS tape in the side of it and record directly onto it. So um, yeah, I would actually re- you know record with those and make like terrible horror movie or like jason movie remakes back when i was a kid <laughs> and uh i don't know it just seemed like an obvious an obvious thing you know i loved i love video and i loved halo so mm-hmm. why not combine the two so, so uh, was there anybody in, you maybe saw on youtube or something like that that kind of got you into doing it was there any insp- anybody was in your inspiration yeah actually uh i used to watch uh hutch and uh digital fear uh actually really digital fear uh watching machinimas ages ago like back in 2007 2008 before, like that was when youtube was just starting up and i i don't know that that just seemed like impossible at the time like i, I guess just in my mind like he was on such a, a different level that you know just a, a 17 year old kid it was impossible to actually like put things on the internet and, and like editing and things like that was just so taboo at least in my world mm. uh, and once that technology became more available i i wanted to experiment and jump on it but it, it was actually uh it was actually call of duty youtubers back in the day like black ops one when mm-hmm. like commentaries were the big thing back in the day i was like yeah I, I see a lot of people doing this with call of duty but i don't actually see a lot of people doing it with halo so that's about the time that reach was out and that's that's really when i when i started my channel was back when reach was out and i would do commentaries and things like that and did that all the way up until halo 4 really until the release of, of mcc it's like, hey guys, Rap Scallion here. <laughs> yeah, essentially, Goes yeah. Puberty. He's like, hey guys, Rap Scallion here. <laughs> that's actually, I actually had a very similar experience too, because like, yeah, it was like the Call of Duty commentaries is what kind of got me into wanting to do YouTube stuff. Like, yeah, like I said, like watching Hutch. Uh, I mean, obviously, I watched like Digital Fear and stuff like that. And he was like the first guy I ever saw like take Halo Machinima videos and actually make like series out of them besides obviously like mm-hmm. red versus blue but like make like but they also that but like well produced and like having like actual like serious story behind them as well uh-huh. and like action based like machinimas rather than just being like short comedy snippets kind of thing right you really yeah. kind of help try to change that format which i think uh i see a lot more machinimas nowadays ever, actually ever since reach where i saw like a lot more like serious content being produced when it comes to machinima stuff in the I mean, a few myself just kind of like, you know, fulfilling a little check mark on fulfilling like the dreams of wanting to do that. But it's so much work that goes into those videos. It's oh, crazy. Yeah. It, it is not easy setting up the camera angles and the scripts and mm. body actors. Yeah, it, it is definitely not easy to do. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And so, uh, so you're up uh, now that you're also streaming as well, kind of quite often. You were talking about like how you're kind of on your way to get trying to get the 152 before Halo Infinite comes out. Cause I think right now you're at like what 150, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm about halfway through 150 at the moment. And I, I started taking it seriously once they actually announced that there was going to be, a, you know, the, the prize that you're going to get in Halo Infinite, although it's still a mystery at this point as to what exactly mm. that's going to be. It's an emblem. 
<laughs> I'm hoping, I really hope it's going to be more than just an emblem because that would be. It's a spray sticker. You just spray it on the walls. It's yeah. a message in game that says, Congratulations. Thank you for playing our game so much. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. Just a text scroll. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, gosh. That'd be big yeah. Yeah. But I, I've been playing Halo 5 really since launch uh, back you know in 2015 but i i pretty much was just playing just you know whatever i wanted to just uh you know team arena uh i, I really wasn't really the the biggest warzone fan uh so but th that doesn't really give you that much xp uh mm -hmm. so it wasn't until they announced that they were going to actually give us some sort of reward in halo infinite where i was like okay i got to i got to start taking this seriously so I was, I, I would say I was around like maybe one thirty at the time, and uh, you know, actually just started playing the 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 featured playlist. And if you actually pay attention to the, the little star next to the the playlist, you know, that'll that'll just right off the bat let you know it's featured. And those will actually give you double the amount of XP for 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 playing those, and that has considerably sped up the amount of time that it actually takes to to get to one fifty two. I uh, couple that with you know the gold arena XP boost or the Warzone XP boost, and you you're, you're going to start flying through. Uh, you know oh, I've yeah. actually been playing with, uh, of course you guys know Gold Ninja Jimbo, and, and he's he's going even further than I am. It, we we got to SR149 a month ago, and he is already almost at 151. Nah, that's it's crazy because I, I feel like I, I just got to 149, and I feel like I've just been playing like obviously i don't like focus too much on it because like, i feel like i feel like i feel like i've just given up on game 152 in this game because it's, it's for how much of an exponential grind it is to mm -hmm. get to the xp because like it's pretty linear when it comes to xp gains right up until like 146 and then it just like swoops up super hard <laughs> you're like right going for because i when you get to like one thing i was at like 148 and i realized like i'm only halfway there to 152 yeah. And the amount of XP needed. I'm like, Yeah, ooh, once you get to yeah. 150, I think that's <laughs> actually 150. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, ridiculous. That's crazy. So, like you said earlier, like I, I'm 150 now, and it's actually it's 150 and then another million XP into that. And then you're officially halfway through the grind. <laughs> that's so crazy. It's, it's, it's actually a, it's a, not very many people have done it. Uh, I think I, I was able to look up on Halo Tracker because you can see like how many people have hit 152. And I think there's definitely less than a thousand people who have done it. Uh, I think it might be around like 700, 800 people total that have hit 152 in Halo 5, which is pretty crazy to think about like the millions of copies that were sold that only like that less than a thousand people actually hit max mm -hmm. rank. Yeah, and I think that's. Just the fact that that is a fact makes me want to <laughs> that has it. Yeah, exactly. The fact that it facts makes me want to have. Yeah. I guess that's kind of like <laughs> like when when Dark Souls was was uh, actually coming out. Yeah, you know, just the fact that people were saying like it was difficult. There's no possible way you can you can beat this game. I was like, yep, I'm gonna beat that game. Exactly. And mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, shout out to exactly. uh, Gold uh, Golden Ninja. No, I'm just kidding, Jimbo. Golden Ninja <laughs> Jimbo, but basically exactly the same thing for me like i had no interest in doing 152 until i met you guys and i was like you know what jimbo told me i couldn't do it so you know what now i'm gonna do it <laughs> so <Right. laughs> he's like no way you could get to 152 before infinite comes out he's like maybe you can but i don't think you can i was like you know what jimbo i'm gonna do it now so thank you yep. yeah yeah and, and honestly XP in a dream that's all you need yeah exactly right <laughs> yeah it, that's honestly kind of what it boils down to and I, I guess really as far as like like tips that I can give for that, like I mentioned earlier, is really just just playing those featured playlists. You're going to see like you're uh, even Pat, just you playing with us the past week. I, I've seen you level up like what ten times. I'm just I went in that, from like one eleven at the beginning. I'm at one twenty eight now, dude. Just playing, yeah. ex just premierly featured. Yeah, yeah. It, it does a huge difference than just playing just regular ranked, which is what I normally would do. Yeah, uh, you know, throw a boost on top of that, but uh, uh, honestly, which the, the the top like I guess recommendation or tip that I can give you is really just what we've kind of been saying here is just surrounding yourself with people who have that same goal in mind, like just actually finding people who are out on that grind of one fifty two. 
that are that will actually play with you and, and share in your misery along that way <laughs> makes makes it so much easier because just doing a solo grind at 152 on halo 5 i would say is next to impossible I don't, that's I don't a big oof on that one i don't yeah. know if you can do it yeah shout out no. to uh future pat man when you guys make it and i'm stuck at like 150 you know still trying to yeah. do it now i do know that uh especially with uh rock and rail when that's a featured playlist that's the whenever you guys see that come out that's the playlist you guys really want to grind yes uh, because like most of the games will go through in like four minutes five minutes at the most really and i think once you hit like the three and a half minute mark or something like that in a game you get like the max xp anyways or like around four minutes or something like that so as long as your game takes that long using using a legendary xp boost you can get probably close to like ten thousand xp for like a four minute four and a half minute long match and so that's definitely the one you want to like get in on when it comes to grinding out the xp of course if you're trying to get 152 at all you just need to keep playing halo 5 on the future playlist and just don't leave your console right right yeah the, the and, best thing that you can do like you said like rock and rail i i was actually i got i was looking on halo tracker earlier today i actually got over 2 million xp in one day just from playing rock and rail with gold arena xp boost oh wow that's correct that gives me inspiration right there hmm. It is insane how much you can get with that. Which, by the way, in the later in the podcast, guys, we'll let you know what plays are coming up in Halo 5 so you know what will be featured at those t- at those times so you know when to grind out in the next week or so. But, yeah. yeah so, so, uh, so just for anybody who is interested in grinding to 152, I am in the works of creating a video where I will actually give you the, my top 10 recommendations, my top 10 tips if you are interested in grinding to 152. So if you are interested, definitely give me a a look on my YouTube, which is actually just youtube.com slash rapscallion. Yeah, and there'll be linked in the description as well of this video. So if you guys definitely want to go check him out, rap, definitely a good guy. So like great player as well. So you definitely want to go give him a check out as well. And actually also while we're on the topic of just creating content, I guess just in general, uh, that uh, rapscallion and I are actually in the works of making a video together. If you want to talk about that a little bit, Pat. I'm having pants I rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there is a song where if anybody has played Halo 2, they might know of a little band called Breaking Benjamin and a song that they made called Blow Me Away. So Kevin Cool X and myself are in the works of actually making a cover for this song. And it, uh, what am I trying to say? We're in the process of actually making it right now. We've got the drums recorded. I've got my my angles recorded for the video and actually in the works of getting the guitar and vocals. And we should have that out for you guys here here before mm-hmm. too long. Yep. And uh, yep, your boy here, Kevin, will be on guitar and I will attempt vocals. We'll see how well it turns out. If I can't, if I just can't do it, then... Uh, I guess we'll just try to find somebody else. Uh, I mean, I did do a karaoke stream a couple of weeks ago. That kind of went over. That went over well. So, yeah, that depending was fun. on the key of the song, I might be able to do just fine. But, yeah, I, uh, yeah. From firsthand listening, you know, uh, appreciate you guys sharing that out. Yeah, sounds really cool. I think uh, fans of Halo Two. I mean, everybody should know that song if you've played Halo Two. It was one of the that was actually the song that obviously introduced me to Breaking Benjamin as a band. So anybody who's a fan of Halo 2, I think you guys are really going to enjoy this Inferred Treat. And yeah, really surprised how well it sounds. You guys are killing it. So can't wait to see the final product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. appreciate yeah, it, should, I'm excited about it. Mm-hmm. Should have that yeah, probably within the next week, two at most, definitely. But yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Hopefully just, I got, my main thing is I just don't want to embarrass myself on the vocals. <laughs> 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 just worried about that part. And uh, but yeah, so uh, we're kind of to- coming towards the end of the podcast here, guys. So, uh, Pat, do you want to kind of go into what the uh, Halo 5 playlist calendar is looking for the next week or so? Sure, Kevin, I will. Uh, so Transitions! J- yes, sweet transition. <laughs> July 25th, we're going to have, which is, you know, obviously in the past, but it's still going on until, what is it, the 2nd? I believe uh, Halo 2 BR Slayer rotates in for Covenant Slayer, which is really what I've been playing, uh, which is like my combination of my two favorite things in Halo, the Halo 2 Battle Rifle and Slayer. So been really enjoying that as a featured playlist. We also have yeah. Warzone Turbo activated right now, which, you know, you know, it's OK, I guess. You know, I'm not a big fan of Warzone Turbo because it's just pandemonium and it's all out craziness. But those XP gains are very nice. 
And then on August 1st, so there, there we go. The rotation comes in. Snipers rotates into ranked for the final month of the season. So goodbye, Halo 3 Classic playlist, and welcome in the Snipers playlist. And also on August 1st, first i said it yes <laughs> easter egg I'm le- i am leaving that in i am not editing that out august 1st <laughs> roaming king rotates in for mythic shoddy snipers so yeah and then eventually rock and rail is coming but that's later in the month and i'm sure we'll update you guys accordingly since this is a weekly podcast we'll keep you guys up to date but you guys got me mm-hmm. freaking hyped for rock and rail i've like like rap said i am primarily just a slayer player that's all i play so you know getting into these featured playlists and just grinding that away to you know really get those xp gains i'm I'm looking forward to that oh yeah that's definitely the time to go but yeah you and i all, all three of us were on stream playing some halo 2 battle rifle and that's it's just it feels so great to use like a working battle rifle in yeah. halo 5 yeah oh, this feels really nice shots fired again. but what <laughs> the weapon it, but the, literally the weapon is just like overpowered it's like there's really no point in picking up anything else yeah. really because even if you try using like a noob combo like it's i mean you can't even trans switch your tail to battle rifle fast enough before like the four shot comes in and because like the aim assist is pretty crazy on that well, but the, yeah i'm looking forward to playing snipers though because snipers should be pretty fun right there but it is ranked which kind of bums me out a little bit because i'm like mm, i kind of wish it just wasn't ranked so it wasn't so sweaty yeah you know? Yeah, but even Halo 2 Battle Rifles is super sweaty right now, and that's the social playlist for the True. freaking week. Yeah, we kept matching against that part. We were in that party four with uh, Golden Engine Jimbo, and we just kept matching against him the whole time. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm not looking to try this hard in social. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not. But I'm also looking forward to Roman King. I really do love that playlist. I Though I'm afraid they'll probably just be the exact same playlist we've had the last but three or four sessions now because mm-hmm. if they had some new maps and i'd be totally down the play because i think roman king is an awesome game mode yeah i'm with you there um, I, I love roman king but unfortunately the last time that was in the rotation i i never even got to play a game it seemed like nobody was actually in the playlist i think yeah it's probably just because it's just, you know it's the exact same experience you had last mm-hmm. month and so it's just like yeah, it's the same thing you had before, which is it's a fun game mode, but not necessarily a game mode that would make you want to come back and uh, play a whole bunch, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like I said, look forward to also Rock and Rail coming. That's the XP grind machine right there, for sure. Yeah, I'm going to save up some boosts for that one, for sure. And save your rec points for whenever there's a good rec pack coming out for legendary XP boosts. They do come out occasionally. Yeah, which... Like we had like that... We had that mythic one right that came out recently that had like uh xp boost come in as well with that or something like that or was it platinum i think it was yeah. the something platinum like pack, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the platinum packs was the recent one yeah those were actually exclusive to if you were actually watching one of the tournament streams they would actually put the codes on the bottom of the screen and you can go to halo.gg and enter them in and they would give you those platinum packs you couldn't actually buy them that was really the only way you can get them until like I said, when they actually had it there recently mm-hmm. but really the, the holy grail is whenever they release just the straight arena or war zone gold XP yes. boosts. Oh, those are you the get, best. <laughs> you get 20, 20 gold boosts per pack. And that yeah. is insane amounts of XP there for you. Yeah, and I, mm-hmm. I actually tweeted, or I messaged John Friend on Twitter. I was like, uh, you know, this isn't a bribe or anything, but I got me and a couple friends that want to spend a lot of money on some uh, XP packs. <laughs> and I was like, any chance those coming out anytime soon? And he's like, He's like, I'm not with the game team, but I'll look into it. And, uh, you know, uh, they're kind of busy working on some uh, some new game I heard about. I was like, yeah, I think <laughs> I heard about that new game, too. I was like, but I was just throwing that out there, John. <laughs> Can't wait for Spartan Assault 2. It looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's going mobile. Strictly mobile, too. Oh, That's sweet. <laughs> yes. Oh, God, yes. You guys don't have yeah. phones? <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh geez diablo immortal yes <laughs> big yikes on that one but yeah and uh i guess I look, if i'm going to a little bit my do a little self promo as well since i just hit a thousand followers on twitch i am planning to do a uh, subathon which basically the idea is i have a set time i'm playing the stream so i'm looking to probably stream about four hours from 12 p.m to 4 a.m on sunday august 4th and with a po- capability of going 
total of 12 hours until 12 a.m., depending on how many people follow and resub and things like that as well. Uh, I, may kind of, may, I might add in, like, hosts with, like, at least, like, five viewers or something like that, kind of some kind of threshold on there as well. But every time someone follows or subs, that the counter continues to max out to 12 a.m. So like a 12 hour game session to keep up with Pat man here. Like you said earlier, the, the marathon streams are real for sure. Oh man. Yeah. The, so yeah, if anyone's still listening, definitely want to keep an eye out for that. I'll definitely make my own video on YouTube. Just making sure people up to stay up to date with that kind of stuff, but should be a long and fun time though, for sure. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, you want to get into the uh, to the outros then? We'll uh, start with you, Kevin. Uh, where can people find you, and uh, what have you been playing this week, of course, as we always do? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I'm, uh, yeah, you guys know I'm on YouTube, Kevin Coolex. Uh, Twitter is Kevin Coolex Halo, because I had it. My previous YouTube, my previous Twitter was stolen by Africans. No joke, that literally happened. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to make a new one. So it's Kevin Coolex Halo. You can find me on Instagram at Kevin Coolex. You can also find me on Facebook as well. If you want to see, follow a dead page on there for Kevin Coolex on Facebook, so you guys can check out that. And so, uh, how about you, Pat Man? Where can people find your content? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kevin, because I've recently like rebranded everything. So on Twitter, uh, I used to be, you know, like with a bunch of underscores and stuff, but I've changed it to just the Patman Gaming. All one word. You could find me on Twitter at the Patman Gaming. It's going to be the same thing on Twitch, which I am now streaming premierly on uh, instead of doing uh, Mixer and all those other ones and and um, D Live and all that stuff. And on my YouTube, I'm streaming exclusively to Twitch at the same thing, the Patman Gaming. And the only thing different on YouTube is just drop the the. So just Patman Gaming on YouTube is where you could find me. And I'm sure Kevin will have, like he said, our links down below. But as far as uh, everything else, just been uh, grinding away at 152. I actually just finished Assassin's Creed this week, uh, the vanilla version. I got all the achievements because I was... Any game that I really, really like, I try to go for 100% completion on. So... I really loved AC Odyssey and got all the vanilla achievements. I'm going to go ahead and branch out to the DLC pretty soon. But yeah, primarily just Halo 5 and waiting for that Flight 2 hopeful invite from 343. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, what about you, Raps? How, where can people find you? What you've been playing this week? Yep. So on YouTube, I am just youtube.com slash Rapscallion. For my streams, as of right now, I am streaming to both Mixer and Twitch. So on Mixer, it is Rapscallion, Twitch, Rapscallion underscore. And for Twitter, you can find me at Rapscallion Halo. Uh, as far as the games I've been playing, uh, primarily just been uh, on Halo 5, doing the, the 152 grind, which you can actually find me on Twitch and Mixer streaming that. And uh, I've been actually playing a little bit of OG Splinter Cell off and on here as of late as well. Yeah, they actually announced at E3 that they were bringing all the OG Xbox Splinter Cell games to backwards compat. And I was like, yep, I'm going to run the store and grab those right now. Yeah, I actually may buy a couple of those. I really want to. I started Chaos Theory, always heard how great it was and never finished it. So I might might do that myself. Yeah, I would definitely say my, my favorites of them would, would be, uh, it's kind of a toss up, honestly, between the first and Chaos Theory. Yeah, the first one was awesome. The first, yeah. the first one. The first one. Yes, the first one. <laughs> I did. That's the one Splinter Cell I did play, and I yeah, I remember that one just being like blowing my mind. Like you can hide in shadows. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, grabbing somebody and then dragging them backwards into the shadows never gets old. Yeah, that game was no, like yeah, ahead sure. of its time, man. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was one of the cool. That's what pretty much got anyone going in that franchise for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess that wraps up episode three of the Halo Outreach Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will catch you guys next week on the next episode. Thank you, Raps, for being on again. We enjoyed having you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, guys.